Hello, welcome back. Chris here, CG Aviator, bringing you another exciting first look preview. This time it's the Azure Poly OV10 Bronco, an aircraft that I'm particularly excited to receive. Uh, so we're going to put it through its paces. In this sortie, we're going to take it from Shoreham over to Southampton. Uh, I'll follow the checklist best I can because I do get distracted. Along the way, uh, I'll shut down the engine and restart it. We'll have some sunshine and showers to battle against. Uh, we'll be playing with the under fuselage doors, dropping the fuel tank away because it does fall away. We're we'll firing the guns. Yes, they work as well. I mean, it has teeth and it has guns. What more could you ask for? Uh, we'll also put it into low level, do some treetop uh, low level flying, and then we'll take it in for some uh, or an ILS at Southampton. So you get the full view of everything this aircraft can do. And I'll throw in some night, uh, night flying things, see the lighting and deliveries you'd expect to get as well. So lots to pack in. Let's get to it. Here are the liveries. At present, you get 12. I particularly like the red and white of the uh, Cal Fire and i'm a fan of the one with the teeth so that's the one we're going to fly today all right so i've opened everything up so you can see inside and hopefully you'll agree with me this looks beautiful let's count some rivets great resolution on these textures there's tires good reflectivity pbr grime all over the place chocks love it red tags flags blanks all that good stuff's on the outside weapons rockets cannons love it We'll put the fuel tank on once we're airborne because uh, it's not compatible with that stores loadout. But I just wanted to show you the, the other teeth, the weapons that it has. Lovely smudges on the uh, on the cone of the prop there. And look at, look at this engine. This has to be one of my favorite parts of the uh, of the modeling. Look how good that engine looks. I mean, well done, guys. That's awesome. Uh, missiles on the outboard. Have a look at the top surface. Lovely. More of the same. Great quality. Great craftsmanship. Very nicely done. Around the back, I've left the uh, trunk open or the boot, depending on whether <laughs> which side of the Atlantic you come from. And you've got the option to make this glass or opaque. And we'll, uh, we'll sit in the back once we're in flight and show you around. Looks uh, pretty cool. What else we've got? GPU comes with it. Also nice and grimy, well used. And it just looks really, really nice. But don't let me persuade you. What do you think? I think it's one of the nicest looking aircraft or nicest, nicest modelled aircraft in the sim. So well done, guys. Very nice indeed. Here we are in the cockpit. And again, just continuing from the outside, this has to be one of the nicest virtual cockpits I've seen. I mean, the texturing is beautiful. The modelling is so crisp. I mean, have a look around the top here. Hopefully track IR will keep up with me. So apologies if it jitters occasionally. You can move the mirrors just really really tidy stuff let's uh let's jump into the back cockpit quickly i'll show you around in there too Ta-da! there is not much back here only a few switches fire extinguisher if you need it well there's also as these labels suggest and the d-ring an ejector seat but it's not it's not modeled <laughs> but i never realized this thing came with an ejection seat it does come with a really really nice view outside so this is a great cruise i mean 250 knots flying around with a view like this uh, you can't really complain that's very nice so here are the options on the efb i've already disconnected the gpu i've changed the uh, dome at the back to glass you can remove the covers here got some padlocks here i'll talk about those during the startup wheel chocks will leave in you've got quick states available uh, then on here you can set all your visibilities i've already removed the gun sight we'll put that back in prior to strafing and the azure poly toy it does bounce around but uh, just to avoid distraction we'll leave that and i've picked the pms 50 but you can pick your own flavor of gps we will go ahead and now does that open or close that opens it so green is open amber is shut uh, of course you can shut the doors yourself so we'll go ahead and do that don't forget to lock them and we'll leave that one open just for the startup. If you do happen to crash or something or you lose the door, because I found that to be an issue, uh, you can click repair canopy here. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> right, here's where you put the external fuel tank on. We'll do that later. Here's where you can put your weapons on. We'll take some of the rockets off so we're not quite heavy. You can see the uh, oleos uh, easing up a little bit as we remove the weight, so that's nice. That takes a little while to load on the first time, but it's a nice uh, map as well. We'll come back to it. In fact, there it is. Good quality. Uh, there's an autopilot it's not modeled in cockpit the aircraft doesn't actually have one i believe but for those of you that want to use it you can if you like on the efb this is a nice touch as well so in here the way they've implemented reverse thrust or an option to do is that i'm using a thrustmaster warthog peripheral so the throttle quadrant uh, and i can use one axis to go all the way into beta range the reverse range and then here 
is ground start, flight idle, and then your usual in-flight range. So it does kind of click when it gets to those stages, and that means I don't have to have a key bind. I can use just one axis, and I really like that, but it does make it a little bit challenging until you get used to it. So very nice stuff. And uh, I'm now up to eight hours in this aircraft. Holy cow, I, I've, been, I've been using it a lot. So that is it. And as, as a reminder, it is uh, version 0 0.7, pre-release version, but again, very polished, lovely stuff. Right, I think it's almost time to start this sucker up. So let's get rid of this and we'll go through the checklist. Okay, it's time to start this up. So we will check that the covers are removed. This is the before starting checklist. The battery is actually a switch on the left hand side, but I've noticed these battery disconnect switches are up. So I'll put those down like that. I think that's correct. On the left hand side, I'll put the battery on, the lights come on, adjust your seat and rudder pedals accordingly. You can check your flight control. I think you can just about see the elevators as well. Uh, fire detection and fire detection warning lights. I think that's this switch here. Nice. And then the fire pull handle lights. Awesome. Love it. Instrument power. So if you notice your attitude indicator and your HSI isn't lined up properly or working properly, then inverter. It's usually that inverter one or the inverter two. Attitude indicator I've checked. We look like we're on 242 as the heading, and I can confirm that with the uh, standby compass, which is about six or seven degrees out. So I like that. That should be uh, just about within limits. External power is not required. Uh, radio is down to the right hand side. There's a little twist thing around the outside for the power. There's one, there's two. We'll set that one to 11075 because that's the ILS. We're not using the radio on the left either, so that's fine. We can leave that as is. Attitude indicator probably done. Fuel quantity is down to the right hand side, which is shy of uh, well, about 860 pounds of gas, I guess. And now we're on to starting the engine. It's really simple stuff. I like it. Uh, so, starting the engine, brake check. We'll make sure that's, yeah, the brakes are set. Propellers, we'll check, are clear. They are clear. Uh, and then we're into the starter. So, I'm going to start the left first, leave the right window open, see what it sounds like. So, the start switch is uh, this one here. Lovely sounds. RPM is down to the right hand side. Here we go. Once it gets through 10%, then condition levers to normal flight. Sounds great. Uh, we're looking for not above 815 in the temperature. When it gets through 50% RPM, making sure the oil pressure is above 50. Fuel boost light is out on the left hand side. And the propeller we need to unlock. So I mentioned on the EFB, let's have a look here, this little lock here. So if I put the left throttle into the beta range, so slightly into reverse, you'll notice that you get the change in engine note, but also the lock disappears. Now I've also noted that I've done this on the left engine, which should be this one, but the, the other lock has disappeared. So score one for me. But there we go. So that's unlocked the um, the pitch of the prop, so it should work for normal flight now. So that's cool. That's done. You shouldn't need the EFB to note that. As long as you put it into the reverse range, it should unlock itself. Once that's done, we can repeat the steps for the right-hand engine. So we'll start the right. Shut the door. Ten percent condition lever to normal flight. Not above eight fifteen. At fifty, we should have all pressure. All pressure coming up. Lovely, and the fuel boost light is out. Propeller unlocked. So put that into the beta range. Done. So that should be unlocked now. And now that that's done, we can put the generators on, which are these two. One, two. External power we didn't use, so that's already disconnected. At least I think it is. Yeah, it looks like it is. And the generator caution lights are out. So that is engine started. Easy as pie. Before taxi checklist, we're checking the instruments are set. So anything we forget here, we'll do prior to takeoff. Um, but the instruments all look like they are good to go for the ones we're using anyway. I guess we could put that TRNG. Uh, trim select. So here's the trim indicator down here. And the trim neutral lights are here. The alt trim. It's here, so you can check it operates in both. And of course, if I trim it now, you can see that this elevator trim goes up and down. Done. Trim, that'll do for me. Compass is set. Yeah, we've already double-checked that. 
Uh, what else do we need? Radio and nav set. We've already set that as well as part of switching it on. Altimeter set. I'll press the B key. Uh, 1022 apparently now. And zero because we're close to the C, so that makes sense. IFF is to the front right. Put that to standby. And chocks. Remember the chocks? They are removed. So that's before taxi checklist complete. I'm doing well so far. Okay, next is to go for the taxi. What I'm going to do is change the weather now. There we go, a little bit more British. This will clear up to the north, north and west, which just makes it a little bit more interesting. Uh, lights, maybe I should have put some lights on. I think if we have a look down here, we can have uh, lights and wind tail. Formation is there, anti-coals go on prior to, to uh, take off. And then external lights uh, is here. So you've got two switches, external lights or external lights and landing lights. Now there is an occasional flash, which you might notice. I don't know if it's a lightning effect or whether my new graphics card is playing up a little bit, but uh, it doesn't happen very often, just bear with me. Okay, brakes are off. Good handful of power to get ourselves rolling, and off we go. Ground handling is very nice, it's not too squirrely, not too twitchy. And we'll go off to the concrete runway here at Shoreham, because it's a little bit longer. So we're turning left, Compass is going left, ADI stays erect, the ball is off to the right and the needle is off to the left. And then we can change uh, to go left and right. So that's the instrument check, good enough for me. So taxi checks, brakes, yeah they work, nose wheel steering checked, flight instruments checked, your damper. I'm not sure how to check it, but you can switch it on down here. We'll switch that on after takeoff, because I think that's when you use it, not during takeoff. And the navigation aids, we can put our map up here, that should show us a basic route. And uh, we've got a VOR set up here, and we've got the frequency for the ILS down to the lower right set, 11075. Okay, we're now at the hold short. We need the before takeoff checklist. So trims are set and neutral. We've got the two lights on for neutral lights. We've got the flaps. Flaps we need to set. So flaps will go to takeoff. There we go. Navigation aid set for departure. Yep, we'll just go VFR and steer our way around the showers. Uh, Pluto heat is this switch down here. Whilst I'm down here, I'll do the anti coal lights. Good, Peter Heat and Andy Coles, IFF will go to on. Sweet. Uh, fuel feed tank, min yep, that's that one. So that's the feed tank, it should be 260, 280 pounds. Looks about right. Uh, flight controls will check full and free and the canopy closed and locked. That's locked, that's locked. This handles forwards and this handles forwards. Excellent. Time to take off. I'll do the lineup checks now so that I'm not distracting myself in the taxi. So attitude indicator is set and the flag not visible. BDHI, I'm not sure to be honest. <laughs> Put in the comments down below if you know what a BDHI is. Condition levers, this is the one I keep forgetting. So this needs to go to take off and land. And the power levers, you can advance for takeoff instruments, normal indications. All right, here we go. Goes off like a whippet. Okay, it's 50. Rotating at 90. 80. Good rumble sounds like it. 90. Climbing gear. Blap. Nice. 1.30 for the climb away, gear is up, lights out, and flap is up. Right, the sun looks like it's breaking through over there, so that's where we'll head, and 130 knots. In case I forget, I did put a custom camera in for the uh, view down the back end. So there you go, that's what it's like to sit down the back. 
I'd much prefer to know where I'm going rather than where I've been. The traffic down there, lovely stuff. They told you to distract myself, 160 knots now. Let's climb on up. After takeoff checks, gear up and flap up. For the climb, condition levers as required, so we can put that back to flight normal. Come on, sir. Your damper can go on, which is that one. And external fuel transfer. Well, we don't have an external fuel tank, so I don't think that's required. The cruise, the cruise checks just condition lever, normal flight, and power levers as required. Good o. Right, what we'll do is we'll climb up to 4,000 feet, which we're pretty much almost there. Our routing looks like it's keeping us clear of the weather, which is tidy. Better lucky than good. And then whilst we're here at 4,000 feet, let's chuck in the autopilot and I'll show you the night lighting. So autopilot, let's pull up the EFB. AP, altitude, autopilot. Climbed a couple of hundred feet, but it should adjust. And then if you click the heading, it should take my current heading. 306. Yes, it does. And we're actually on track. Look at that. I love it. Right, I'll turn this down ahead of the night lighting and then we'll turn down the sunshine. Now, what I will need to do, so the lighting panel is down to the right hand side. You've got high intensity floodlights, you've got standby compass, you've got uh, low intensity floodlights and your standard set of stuff. So I'll switch those on so it's not entirely dark and turn down the lights. So here we are, this is the cockpit at night. It's very nice, I can't remember how to dim this. Can I do it like here, that's the volume. <laughs> anyway, well really bright GPS, but everything else looks very nice. Let's turn down the red lighting. That's what that looks like. Then if we go down here, we can turn on the high intensity floods. Yeah, that looks amazing, also remember, I didn't put my landing lights on, so the landing lights are now on. And then there's the dim floodlights, which are here. I mean, look, that's really nice. Very nice. Have a quick look outside. Yep, not much to see. <laughs> Very dark. So what's the next event? I think the next event is to uh, switch off an engine. So what I'll do is I'll bring it around to the left. Let's switch the autopilot off because it's cheating. Autopilot off. Uh, and we'll shut down the left engine. Loving those rain showers. So in order to shut it off, I'm going to pull it back to idle first. So left engine to flight idle. There's more than enough power from single engine to actually climb single engines, so not a problem. We'll also pull back the left condition lever to not just shut off, but Feather and fuel shut off. I don't know if this is the bug. It does take a little while to react. In the Takano that I flew, if you were to um, emergency shut down and feather, it would happen within four or five seconds. There we go, that's shutting down. And eventually, once it feathers, it'll stop and just wobble slightly in the airflow. Look at that, there's a picture. How nice is that? Right, so if we want to restart this, we need to unfeather it. So feathering means the props uh, position themselves so the narrow edge or the leading edge goes into the airflow. It reduces the drag and stops it turning. So in order to undo that, we need to go to the ignition and unfeather. See, I'm still climbing, not paying attention at all to what I'm doing. Uh, so that goes open, that goes on. And actually, this is really cool because you can watch. Well, I guess it depends on your definition of cool, but you can watch the props turn back into their unfeathered position and then it'll start rotating right on cue the RPM picks up really quickly and I'll put the condition lever back to normal flight oh there she is and the engine instruments are all nominal although the left engine look the temperature's taking a little while to creep up I like that I like that that's cool let's shut that that is shutting down the engine. I guess next we should look at throwing this aircraft around a little bit. I'm just loving the showers, absolutely loving the showers. 
So B and O for this aircraft is 250 knots. So we won't exceed that whilst we're throwing it around. Let's go for a barrel roll first, shall we? 200 knots. Lots of power in this aircraft. Loving the shadows across that cockpit. No problems whatsoever. Let's try one from outside. Lovely. It's my aircraft stuttering a little bit. Now what we'll do is go for a stall. Now in flight you can pull your uh, throttle axis all the way back and it won't go below flight idle, so no worries about that. This aircraft will stall about 90 knots, I think, clean. 80 knots takeoff flap, 70 knots fall flap. And then if you don't heed the warnings, then it'll spin. Well, it'll certainly auto-rotate. Gently. Okay, for some full power, we'll do some G stall as well. 130 knots, stall warner. That's cool. If I pull too far, it'll bite you. Nice, so really nice slow speed handling. I like it. Sunshine and showers, lovely stuff. Up at 7,000 feet, it's really easy to climb in this aircraft. Let's let's go down a bit. Okay, jettisoning, not the easiest word to say, but here we go. So two options for jettison jettisoning. Uh, you can either pull this or twist this handle and you'll remove all stores apart from the under fuselage tank if you had one fitted, I think. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. We've kept the missiles, but we've lost the rockets. So now we can put ourselves on a fuel tank. So if we go to the fuel page, fuel tank. We now have a fuel tank. And what we'll do is jettison this and you'll see it fall away. Oh, look at those graphics. Beautiful. Here we go. That's this button up here. Stores, emergency jettison. There it goes. And it'd be really nice if that went or a splat as it went down, but it doesn't. It just disappears. Nice. Next event. Next event is going to be firing the gun. Turn the autopilot off. Now we go, we're way too high, so let's go on down here. How are we doing for route? Yeah, we're following the route just about. We need to find ourselves a target and give ourselves a gun sight. There we go. Gun sight's on. Let's find ourselves a target. So let's have a look also at what it looks like. There's a little clicking going on in the background, which I don't know if that's a bug or not, but that's what it looks like. Let's see outside. Cool. And I've also got a custom camera view here. <laughs> I know it's only Microsoft Flight Sim and I know people get really emotional about the fact that you shouldn't have combat stuff in Microsoft Flight Sim. You can, it's fine. Not a problem. Okay, what are we going for outside? Let's go for... I want something out here. There's a barn. Let's go for that barn. Here we go. Oh, a bit floaty on the rudders. Nice, I like it. Nice. Well, there you go. That is strafing in the Bronco. Good fun. Now, just so we can see out the front a bit better, let's get rid of that gun sight again. And we are in to treetop low flying. Look at this greenery. Another bit of greenery, and there should be a shadow around here. Yes, love a shadow. Now, if you flew this at 180 knots at three miles a minute, if you wanted to do some proper navigation, of course, most people just use the GPS. Or you could squeeze out 240, although that's very close to the VNO of 250. And 240 will give me four miles a minute. And if you're not pulling up for the treetops, you're not flying low enough. Let's have a look outside.
<laughs> oh, I do love flying low level. Not that I've ever flown this low in an aeroplane. But 200 knots, this is an absolute joy to fly around. It's not twitchy, it doesn't... It feels like a light aircraft, but it's not twitching around like it doesn't have any inertia at all. <laughs> oh, I don't want to go too low, because I can't see where I'm going. I was kind of guessing. That's cool, though. That's very cool. Look at that. <laughs> uh... I crack myself up. Right, another minute or two of this, and I, I, I guess we should really go and land this thing and do some ILS, which is boo boring, but it should be picturesque with the showers, Southampton. Remember, if you've got any questions, feel free to put those in the comments below. Happy to answer. And let me know what you think. I think it's an absolutely stunning little aircraft. And I'm not paid to say it, I do give my honest opinion. The shadows going across the cockpit is always it's so beautiful. Such a nice cockpit. Power lines. More power lines. How's the nav going? Yep, nav's not too bad. If I zoom out, we should see. I'll zoom. There we go. Okay, I said 10 points. So we're almost at the point we need to pull up for our ILS. So what do we need to do? Descent checks. I guess recovery checks you can call it. Approach procedures have already reviewed. So uh, we've got 11075 down here. We've got um, VOR set here if we needed it. It's automatically come up with 199 as the final approach track. This, by the way, is the ILS, um, whatever it's called. Someone tell me what it's called. I have no idea. But that's where we'll read the ILS. And it's also got a little arrow at the top that tells you whether you're intercepting the localizer, which is cool. And I'll demonstrate that as well. Uh, I don't know what the decision altitude is. It's not the idea of this is not to do a professional ILS. It's just to show you what it looks like and feels like to fly. Uh, cockpit air and defrost. I don't need to do. I'm not going to do. Altimeters set. Uh, power levers. We'll put those to um, take off and land when we get closer. And then we're into the before landing checks, which we'll probably do on the descent down the glide slope. So up we go. Pull back the power. We want about 1,500 feet. The glide slope should start to come in fairly quickly because we're going to keep this tight. The localizer is coming in really quickly. Here we go. <laughs> I was closer than I thought. Hey, better lucky than good. And the glide slope's coming in. Look at that. It's almost like I've practiced this too many times. Probably. 130 knots is the limiting speed for the flap, and I'm guessing for the gear as well, so I can stay below that. And descending. Nice, paying too much attention outside of course. I'm going to start descending too quickly. We want 100 knots for the approach. Stall speed with down flap is going to be 70 knots. So that's worth bearing in mind. And we also need these condition levers to take off and land. If you do these first, you'll get a config warning, like a wheels warning, uh, which is why I did the gear and flap first. But before landing chest, condition levers done. Your damp should go off as well. Done. Well above glide path. Well done, Chris. Keep it up. The so flaps, uh, nope. Condition lever, your damp, hydraulic system, no idea where that is. Gear down and flaps. Gear looks like it's down, I guess, and flaps is down. Right, now that I've finished buggering around, let's get down onto that glide slope. I like the wind noise as well. Nice. Just look at that, incredible. Right, 100 knots, we need about 500 feet rate of descent on the BSI. That'll keep us there or thereabouts. I can see the runway, of course. Okay, the video is, normal, is almost over, so let me know what you think in the comments below. If I've done enough to earn a like and subscribe, please hit that button and support the channel. Hopefully I don't spoon this landing away, but overall I think this aircraft is brilliant fun. I will be using this a lot. Lots of attention to detail, lots of extra features, flies really nicely. But the landing is challenging, so I need to remember that not to pull my throttle axis all the way back because that'll be reverse thrust after touchdown. 100 knots. Oh, getting a bit slow. 70 knots is the stall, so we don't want to do that. And welcome to Southampton. I'll do the after landing checks just for thoroughness, but uh, 
that will be it. 100 knots. Flight idle. Keep it coming down. Come on. We're down. That wasn't the aircraft being twitchy, that's just me manhandling it, but that's cool. I like that. Welcome to Southampton. Okay, after landing checks, flaps can come up, conditioner levers can go back to normal flights. This one and this one. Uh, IFF can go to off, we need to remember to turn off here. Take a take it right. Uh, what else we've got? Anti-collision lights can go off. That one. External fuel transfer, we weren't doing that, be off, trim, set to neutral. Trim, trim, trim. Neutral. Is there anything else? Nope, that's it, and then it's just shut down. So that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until the next time, take care and fly very safe indeed.